Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I have a mini album to share with you. I did film a lot of this process that I will play here in just a moment, but it's a really long process. Um, so I did have to speed through it. And I know there's some of you that just want to see the flip through and don't want to watch the process of it. So I will include that at the end of this video, but I'll do a quick flip through as well. This is a wedding album that is seven and a half inches tall by six and a half inches wide. The spine is four inches and I've used the gorgeous collection from Echo Park Just Married. And I've actually been working on this album for quite a while. Um, I started when the collection first came out, but I kept getting interrupted and I hate doing that. When I start a project, I like to just work on it until I get it done. I, I usually don't work on anything else, but this stuff just kept coming in the way, so I'm so happy to finally finish it. This was a really fun project to work work on, and I love the paper collection. So I'm going to try and remember everything I did in this because, like I said, I've been working on it for a while. So on the front here, I have about four or five layers of this beautiful label design that I cut for my Silhouette Cameo, and I used... Um, a lot of the digital collection, uh, paper collection throughout this. I use some of the physical papers as well. I mixed and match. I like doing that because reasons like this, I can use this label that comes in the collection and size it to the exact size that I need. So I added some flat back pearls, this beautiful rosette trim on the side. And I love this paper. I added that to the back. And then as you can see, it's done in black. Black looks stunning with this collection. Love this paper here. So on the front here, I have this waterfall bracket style. Um, I don't necessarily want to fold it up, but it is scored. So the person that gets this album, which by the way, this album will be for sale. I will have it linked down below to my Etsy store if you're interested. And I also have a mini album tutorial on how I make my mini albums in general, not necessarily this size, um, but it's the concept of how I make mini albums. So I'll link that down below as well. And I do also sell blank mini albums that are ready to go in either craft, black or white that are seven and a half by five and three quarters with six pages, pocket pages like this. So all of these are pocket pages and I added a mat inside that is a bracket style that I designed. So this can be for journaling, either using a silver pen or a white pen, or it could be for added photos. This album will hold a lot of photos. On this side, like I started to mention, is I have this bracket style waterfall. So pictures can be placed on the waterfall. Like I said, I don't necessarily want to bend them up, but they are scored. So the person who's going to add the photos can bend them up and put them on here. I have the Mr. and Mrs. that I've added, this beautiful uh, ivory satin trim with some wedding rings. On this side, again, another bracket style pocket. I added some journaling cards to it. Love changes everything. This is a four by six. Great to add a photo on back or journaling. Photos can be added to the pockets as well. All of them are tabbed pockets, so they, they allow for a little bit more room. Um, if they were glued straight down to the page, you wouldn't get enough room in them. But the way they are, you can add more uh, photos to them, more journaling cards, whatever you'd like. This beautiful 3x4, our wedding story, and then this tag using this gorgeous image from the collection. I added a bow along with a cabochon flower. This album has several flip outs and fold outs. This one I added and they lived happily ever after with this beautiful flourish. And I did add some Crystal Nouveau drops, a bow with a beautiful Wild Orchid Crafts pearl center. This flips up. It says our wedding and it's left open so a photo can be placed underneath. And then this one I believe a uh, perfect size would be a three by three photo over here. On this size, side, I have a larger bracket pocket. It says forever with you, and this is backed on chipboard, so it's slightly dimensional. Gorgeous paper. I love this paper as well, this flowered paper. So to this pocket, I have two four by six 
journaling cards. One says our wedding day, perfect for journaling photos. And then this beautiful image of the cake. And then I have these two tags. On this side, another bracket pocket. It says our story, just married. And then I have this large tag. I added happily ever after with some seam binding bow. And hanging from it is this little love charm. Here, I have uh, an envelope pocket and I put two of them throughout. You just untie the twine. It has some beautiful pearl brads and inside both pockets are going to be some tags. Photos can be placed in there. Quite a few photos can be placed in there actually. Another pull-out map, but this one's a little bit smaller to allow for the size of the um, envelope. Here I have this gorgeous oval frame, a label that says forever it's left open so the photo can be placed behind it. I have some flat back pearls and then I have these gorgeous photo corners. And I also have a template made from transparency that the person can place over their photo, trace around it and cut it. And it'll be a perfect mat for this, leaving a slight border of this scallop. So I just tuck that behind here in this pocket just to keep it out of the way since it's not pretty to look at. On this side, I believe, let me get my ruler. I believe this will hold a four by four. Actually, this will hold a three and a quarter inch square photo that will allow to leave a little bit of a border. I added happily ever after in this silhouette of this couple. Beautiful paper here too. And then this one, again, I, I worked on some of these quite a while ago. This is going to be for a three by three photo. I have this beautiful bow with this flower diamond in the center. And then I have these um, little journaling cards for, forever together. And this is a three by four that I size down. And then this little heart, it says, you are my happily ever after. Again, photo corners on that as well. This side I have a scallop border in black and then this beautiful design paper and a tag in here that says it was love at first sight, another four by six. Love this paper here, it's the Just Married. So this can, this can, um, you can add a photo on this and place behind here or put this in a different pocket if you don't want it that. And here's a flip out with a scalloped edge. These are going to hold, let's see, two and a half inch square photos on both of these photo mats. Again, this was left open. On this side, this is for a larger photo. This will hold a four by four or about a three and a half, three and three quarter square photo, whatever the person wants, or a smaller photo, a two by two. Again, all of these have mats for more photos. This side I have a smaller pocket. This is always and forever, no matter what, with hearts, some rhinestone trim on both sides, and this beautiful saying, and then this pulls out to hold two by two photos. On this side, I have a gorgeous um, a range of the, the flowers that come in the collection. And this will hold three by three photo. Love this moment, Mr. and Mrs. And I have some flat back pearls. On this side, this will be a two by two photo. I have some of these flowers popped up so they're dimensional. I have some flat back pearls. And this paper back here, again, I like using the digital collection because I designed this paper myself. It was a stamp, digital stamp that says love that um, that came in the collection and I just added it to that beautiful navy background and it also says P.S. I love you.
Here's another flip out. I used a um, decorative edge punch. I believe it's a Martha Stewart punch, the lacy edge punch. I left this blank because I, I just think this paper is just beautiful by itself. And then these are great for two by two photos on both sides. And then this, um, I just left blank because I thought it was just pretty. I added a tag with a bow, flower center, and it says forever. And then this would be great for a three by three photo. It says our wedding day, Mr. and Mrs. Our love story begins today forever. And then the gorgeous flowers in the collection. This one I believe is a two by two. This will hold a two and a half inch square photo. I have this gorgeous ornate frame that's popped up on several layers so it is dimensional. Same with this here and again that's that beautiful paper on the front but I sized it down and then I love the background paper as well. Another envelope, I won't open this one up, but it does have, um, I believe, three or four journaling cards inside. Perfect to add photos to it. I have a large bow with a cabochon flower, another side pullout mat. This one has a beautiful pocket to it. And a photo can be placed on this journaling. And then on this side here is that beautiful scalloped heart again with a just married photo corners, this beautiful paper, and then two mats here, perfect again for more journaling. On this side I have a rhinestone pocket with a gorgeous tag of the image of the wedding cake with two little wedding rings and some seam binding. And then on this side, another bracket style pocket it says our wedding. This is um, backed on chipboard, some beautiful striped paper in the collection, and then three little journaling cards, all backed on black cardstock. And then the last pocket is Mr. and Mrs. This beautiful label, it says together, this gorgeous paper in the background. Then we have this four by six tag, this love tag that I added a, this is a die cut to it and I added a pearl. And then this beautiful little tag with the engagement, a bow and a pearl to the center. Again, photos can be put in this pocket here. And on this last page, I have an accordion style pullout. It is tied with seam binding, this gorgeous paper in the background. And then this allows for more photos. It flips both ways. So room for lots more photos. So I hope you've enjoyed this flip through. If you'd like to stay tuned for the fast play of how this came together, please do. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment and check the description box for more information. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. I appreciate you staying through for the process of the video. I did not film the entire thing. As you can see, I've already started the mini album, added a few of the pattern papers and some flip pages. The reason being is it just would be way too long of a video. As it is, this is a really long video and I worked on this album for on and off for I think about two months. So I do have a video showing the concept of how I make mini albums, not necessarily an album just like this, but similar to this. And once you understand the concept, you can adjust them in any way that you want. So check the description box for that. I'll be sure to link that. And in this album, I'm using a lot of silhouette cameo cuts like that envelope. There is a silhouette cameo cut. I'm also using a lot of digital papers. I did use a few of the physical uh, paper collection. I like using both because it makes my collection go a lot further and with the digital I can adjust them how I want. I also have a video where I explain a little bit more of how I use a digital collection in mini albums so I'll be sure to link that in the description box below as well. So here I'm gluing back to back a matting for a half page that I have in there and I like to put a piece of scrap paper behind the page I'm working on because it helps me be able to see exactly where I'm placing my paper so I can get it centered. 
So that there is a digital collection that I added and designed all of my silhouette. I pretty much designed all of them before I started in my silhouette. So here I'm using a flip out page. I don't show the full thing, but it's a page that's the same size plus a half inch as my regular page. And then you want to score it on the half inch, fold it over and glue it to however you want it to flip out. So I believe that one I had flip open to the left right there, as you can see. And then I added my magnets to help it stay closed and glued down my pa uh, pattern papers. Again, that's all digital right there. I'm using Fabri-Tac Beacon Glue because if any of it seeps out, you can use a glue eraser and it erases up nicely. And I use a lot of glue. I want to make sure my album is really adhered well together. Another dis digital design that I made up in my Silhouette Cameo. And that white label part there, I know I do that to remind myself where I want that label to be adhered down. But I also print it out separate and cut it out separate because I want it to have some dimension to it. And any pages like that one in the top left that you see with a white block, it's because I know that I'm going to put a matting down. So just to save on some ink, I leave a white block there. This beautiful ornate frame, I did about three different layers. I wanted it, it's a very delicate frame, so I wanted it to have some dimension to it and stand up. So I'm just using from a fine tip bottle some Scotch quick dry glue and erasing any glue that did seep out from all those cutouts. Here I wanted that to stand up as well, so I'm adding two pieces of cardstock, thick cardstock behind it. All of this was cut from the Silhouette Cameo. And now I'm going to adhere this down to my page. You'll see me use a scrap piece of cardstock or paper on top of it to press it down. That way, any of the glue that seeps out, it'll seep out onto the paper, not my hands, and then my hands transfer it to somewhere else. So it helps eliminate getting glue everywhere. So once I get it where I want, I'll press that down with a scrap piece of paper. I do still need to go back and erase a little bit of the glue that you can see. It has a little shine to it, so you just take that eraser and it comes right off. And then this is what I was talking about where I left that white spot so I could remember exactly where I wanted that label to go. But I did several layers of that label to give it a chipboard feel. And then what I do at the very end is I go back, uh, excuse me, that's what I did here as well. I wanted to remember to add that little scallop circle to that with that beautiful image on it. And then what I do is go back later and add more embellishments throughout the album. I see what it needs, whether it needs some pearls or a bow, something like that. So here, this piece of paper, the reason there's that white block is, again, I knew I was going to be adding a pocket to that. So why waste the ink? I left a white block there. That way I didn't waste the ink there. And then I scored over those two tabs. Again, this pocket was designed in my Silhouette Cameo. I use that a lot, as you can tell, and adhered the three sides down. And then I'll add my decorative piece to the top of that. By using some digital, you can really customize an album, like adding that Our Wedding. I added the pink with a black shadow to it. And here's a different day, probably a different week that I started working on the album. So I cut right to it and I'm adding a photo mat. I wanted this photo mat to hide behind that flip out page that I made. And again, another white block because I'm going to be adding a pocket to the page. And what you'll see me do a lot is I have my double-sided tape on all sides of the paper. I remove the top piece, center the paper exactly where I want because it's easily able to still move around. And then once it's center, I press that top down and then I can lift the paper and remove the backing of the other three sides of tape. And that way my paper goes on my page perfectly centered. That little piece you see sticking out the side, those are, I get those um, pieces from my ATG when I buy my ATG tape. They come in there with it. I save those and use those. You'll see me use them a few times throughout. I didn't want to glue that pocket together because these are all pocket pages. So I added that there to make sure no glue seeped out and glued my pocket shut by accident. Here's another label. I'm adding, I believe, two pieces of chipboard or, excuse me, cardstock to give it that chipboard feel. 
like I said, all of those I'll go back and look at and decide, oh, I wanted to add some flat back pearls to. I do that at the end. Again, another piece of that beautiful pattern paper. These photo corners, I printed out, again, those are digital as well. I copied the exact color that's in that pattern paper so it matched perfectly. Cut those out from the Cameo and then adhered those down. This one I didn't leave a white block because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this one, but I decided to go back and add this matting to it. I backed a lot of this stuff with black cardstock because it's such a beautiful collection with that pop of black. It goes so well together. And I love giving dimension to my pages throughout my album. It just gives it a different feel. Adding this silhouette that I cut from Cameo, I'll use one of those non-stick pieces because I don't want to accidentally glue it down to where the person that receives this photo album can't place their entire picture down. So I leave it up like that to make sure it doesn't glue anywhere I don't want it to glue. So this page again was one that I pre-designed and that digital heart is a digital stamp. I added that to the paper. I don't like everything to be one layer. That's why you'll see me. I could have printed this all out on one piece, but I wanted to give this page dimension and a different feeling to it. So that little, those are journaling cards that I sized down to make them the size that I needed for this specific page. And that little one you see there, I added with ATG tape because I knew I might, I knew that there was a good chance I was gonna have to move it around once I got the rest of my page laid out. And as long as you don't press it down real hard, you're able to do that. And I did have to move it slightly right there. So I did cut out four photo corners, but I only used two. And I believe I used them on a different page somewhere in the album. Remove the other three sides of my tape and press that down. So here's those smaller pages. It's just simply a regular size page that I decided to give it a little bit more unique look. I just cut it down and then I made um, a matting for the inside for more photos and then decorative on the outside. Here I'm adhering down my photo mat. I will adhere down my paper and then I wanted to add some flowers that come in the collection. I was showing you up close that that's that paper that I designed. Um, I used a digital stamp, gave it that pink color to match, and then added that to my entire background to give myself a completely unique piece of paper. So I wanted to glue that flower all the way to the edge. That's why I'm using those non-stick pieces, and I also didn't want to gl accidentally glue it down to where my photo mat is going. And that second flower arrangement I'm using pop dots for. I'll add a third one, but I'm going to let those dry first. Adding this gorgeous pattern collection. I just kind of go back and forth and do what needs to be done. Here, I don't show you the full thing, but I'm just adhering down the, the um, photo mounts that I cut or the tags that I cut for that pocket. I did glue down the pocket in the center so it gave me two different pockets that those tags slide into and those are for more journaling or photos. Here I'm adding some seam binding. I'm using some hug snug seam binding to the top of this tag that I cut out and I'm adding two of those little wedding rings that I got from the wedding section at Michael's quite a while ago. You get a big pack of them and I'm going to tie my bow. Once I'm happy with my bow, I want it to be a little bit more of a substantial bow. So I'm just going to simply tie another one and hot glue it onto the first one. And then the two little wedding rings will dangle from it. It's super cute. I love that beautiful image from the collection of the wedding cake. I did back that tag on a pink tag to match the collection. Here I'm adding a bow to that tag that I made again from the collection and I decided to add a cabochon flower to the center. I hot glued the cabochon but it did fall off later so I would suggest if you're doing that to use some E6000 or glossy accents. I went back and added glossy accents. 
So here I'm putting the same pattern paper on the front and back cover. I do add tape to the center as well. It's a pretty big piece, so I'm adding some ATG, pressing that down. Again, removing just the top, centering it. I'm sorry about my head getting in the way. I want to make sure that it's exactly where I want. And then once I was happy with that, I'll pull up the rest of the tape backing, add a little glue to the center, press that down. So here's that bracket waterfall that you saw in the front um, page, the front cover. I'm just simply adhering down my mats. I don't show you all of that. It's a little boring. And those were all cut from the Silhouette Cameo. I go back with my scoreboard and score them so the person that's going to be adding photos can simply fold up those pages to be able to add their photos or journaling. And then they um, stack perfectly together. I'm adding some ivory satin ribbon, tying a bow. I'm going to mess with my bow a little bit until I get it exactly where I want. And what I can't really show you on camera, it's I don't really show the full thing, is I use my crop dial to put a hole right behind the center of that bow, and that's so I can put some crochet twine through it and hang some more of those wedding rings. Here I'm using my lighter to go over those edges, and that'll stop the edges from fraying, but you want to be very careful because it will burn your ribbon if you're not quick, and it can also start on fire, so you don't want to be really careful doing that, but it does stop it from fraying. So here's where I just kind of thread the crochet th twine through, excuse me, and I hot glue that ribbon down to hold that in place, tape it in the back because you won't see it, I'll be gluing that down, and then they'll dangle from that and hold perfectly. So I'm going to add a lot of double-sided tape. I really don't want this going anywhere, so I cover the entire back with some double-sided tape, get that exactly where I want, and press that down. I do add a little glue to the edges, the top edges. Like I said, I really don't want this going anywhere, so I'll let that dry. Here is an accordion um, pullout. I don't show that on camera. It's the exact same thing. I think I did a five by four, and I did about four pages, and I glued them just like you used to do in kindergarten. I made an accordion um, little pullout. That way, lots more photos can be added to the album. I do that a lot with my baby albums too. It's a great way, and wedding albums all the time. It's a great way to get a lot more added photos to your album. So once the person adds their photos, they can retie the seam binding and it holds it all together. Again, added lots of double-sided tape to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. So here I'm just going through adding all my journaling cards. I always do a lot of journaling cards and tags and little labels and go back through and see where I think the album needs a little more embellishing. I always make sure to leave the right side open so a photo can be placed behind it. And I'm using some glossy accents to add my flat back pearls. Even though those are adhesive, I like to make sure that they won't come off. This is a beautiful Spellbinders oval die that I used for that. And I decided to add this scalloped heart, but I wanted it cut on the edge. So I just cut a probably a quarter inch off, if that, and glued it right up to the edge of my page. And then I'll use something to hold it while it dries. And then I'll add a four by six journaling card behind it once it's dry. So this beautiful Spellbinders die is a pocket die. And I'm going to adhere down the tabs and place this non-stick paper because I don't want that accidentally, any glue accidentally seeping down and gluing down that pocket. I want to be able to use it as a pocket. Again, going to add a bow to this side and I'll use that non-stick piece to make sure I don't accidentally glue down my photo mat. And here's where my my mat piece will stick. I wanted to go ahead and add a bow. So again, I'll put that non-stick piece back down so I can glue my entire bow down and it'll only stick to that cardstock. I wanted to make a rhinestone pocket using this rhinestone um, that you get from, again, the wedding section at Michael's. Comes in a big roll, cuts very easily. So I just cut it down to size. I'm going to use my glossy accents and go around the two sides and the bottom. And you really want to give this some time to dry. Don't mess with it. I do put some nonstick pieces in it, 
because I added a bow, my head got in the way, so I didn't show that, but I added a bow to the top left of that pocket. And that way it didn't, this glue didn't seep in. So here I'm adding my front and back cover again, doing my same method where I add just the top. Once I'm happy, remove the other three pieces, add glue to the center really press that down and if you're going to add a bow or a ribbon closure you'd want to do that before adding your pattern paper such a beautiful collection i wanted to keep the cover being that there's a lot going on on the inside i, I wanted to keep the cover pretty simple so i'm adding this beautiful rosette trim you just cut it down to size and i didn't have any that was wide enough so i'm going to have to cut another matching piece super simple to cut and I do use hot glue you can also use the beacon Fabri-Tac but I love the fact that the gl hot glue sets up instantly and I can continue working I just slowly take my time keep working around adding a little more glue I don't show the second part because I actually put it in my lap so I could get a really good view of it but the second piece lines up really well you'll never be able to tell that it was two different pieces it looks like one continuous piece when I'm done so that's where I glue on that piece. And lastly, I'm going to add a label that I print and cut from the Cameo. I added about five different layers, gave it a pink frame to it, and then added three flat back pearls using some E6000. So if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed the process. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I will put some more information down in the description box. Have a great day.